Hi, I'm Prof. Johnny. Welcome to Goodwill Training and Assessment Center Incorporated. May kasabihan tayo na sa Diyos ang awa na sa tao ang gawa. So ano pa hinihintay natin? Tara na at gawa na tayo! A pleasant day to all the viewers and subscribers. If you want the surface of the world to be nerd with a coarser pitch than the nerd surface to be produced by an earning tool, the other method to be used is through the use of a universal milling machine. And this is what I'm going to demonstrate today. This method is the same as the method used in helical gear making, especially the calculation of indexing, pitch diameter, lead, and the gear ratio, or the change gears necessary to produce the required helix angle. I want to produce a diamond knurl with 40 degrees helix angle. The diameter of the workpiece is 65 millimeters. The number of each set of oppositely inclined teeth is 54, and the lead screw of the machine is 6. Before the gear ratio can be calculated, the pitch diameter and the lead must be known first. The pitch diameter is 62 millimeters and the lead is 234. So the gear ratio is 234 over 240. Now, in order to use the available change gears of the dividing head, I'm going to use a compound gearing method. So the gear ratio becomes gear on worm is 65 teeth, first gear on stud is 100 teeth, second gear on stud is 90 teeth, and gear on lead screw is 60 teeth. Here are now the change gears on the worm shaft. 65 teeth, first stud, 100 teeth, second stud, 90 teeth, and the gear on the lead screw is 60 teeth, which is the driver, driven, driver, driven. There are two parts of the universal milling wherein the helix angle can be set, the table and the vertical head. Swiveling the table of the machine is more commonly used. This time, I want to use the other way, which is by swiveling the vertical head of the machine. I will now swing the vertical head of the machine to 40 degrees to the right or in a counterclockwise direction to produce the first set of teeth with a right hand helix. It should also be noted that the direction of rotation of the dividing head spindle and the work should correspond to the position of the vertical head. Thus, it should rotate in a clockwise direction when the direction of feed starts from the right side to the left side end of the workpiece to produce a right-hand helix angle. I will also use a double angle milling cutter. Let's start to cut the workpiece.
Okay, this is now the last cut for the first set of teeth. The first set of teeth with 40 degrees right hand helix angle is already cut. Let's complete the diamond nail by cutting the second set of oppositely inclined teeth or in a left hand helix. Take note, the vertical head of the machine will now be swiveled to the left or in a clockwise direction. Or it could be in the same position, but I have to move the workpiece at the back of the cutter. And the direction of rotation of the workpiece is in a counterclockwise direction to produce a left hand helix. And this would require an idler gear. Dito, lalagay natin ang idler gear dito. Okay, this is an idler which is not included in the calculation but the purpose is to change the direction of the rotation of the spindle of the dividing head and the work. Okay, sineset na natin ang depth of cut. The workpiece is now at the back of the cutter and is rotating in an opposite direction due to an idler gear. Index. Cut. Okay, last indexing for the last tooth of the second set of teeth with left hand helix. That's how we cut a coarser diamond nail through the use of a universal milling machine. Let's have a Q&A portion. Prof. Johnny, how can we determine the direction of swinging the table of the machine to cut 
helical tip. In order to determine the direction of swinging the cable of the universal milling machine, we need to understand first the difference between a right-hand helix and left-hand helix. If the helix slopes down and to the right, it is a right-hand helix, while a left-hand helix slopes down to the left. When a left-hand helix is to be cut, the table of the machine must be swiveled in a clockwise direction. A right-hand helix may be produced similarly by moving the right end of the table in toward the column or by moving it in a counterclockwise direction. But if the vertical head of the machine is to be used, just like what I used, the vertical head must be swiveled in a counterclockwise direction to produce a right-hand helix. And the vertical head must be swiveled to the left or clockwise direction to produce a left-hand helix. Or it could also be in the same position, but the workpiece must be moved at the back of the cutter and change its direction of rotation by the use of an idler gear in the change gears. See you again. Thank you very much.